Hello, everyone. Welcome to Module 2. I'm Syl, your instructor for the next two weeks. With Amy having introduced AI in the context of the newsroom, I'll be spending the next two weeks introducing AI as a technology, from its history to how the AI industry is configured today. Along the way, we'll be hearing from well-respected people actively developing and studying AI in journalism and beyond today. This week, I have the pleasure of welcoming Professor Meredith Broussard to the course. Her books, Artificial Unintelligence and More Than a Glitch, have made waves in understanding how AI models perpetuate and sustain bias. She'll go through her own personal definition of AI before going into how it has impacted her research. But first, we'll begin with a short history of AI. Artificial intelligence has its roots in World War II. The United Kingdom and the United States both hired many mathematicians to break into German encryption. One of these mathematicians was named Claude Shannon, who noted a few tricks for quickly solving encrypted texts. Namely, he noticed letters of the alphabet follow one another in a particular order and in different frequencies. For example, a noun usually follows an article and the letter E is the most common letter of the alphabet. He developed a statistical method for modeling these patterns. He called this a language model. Language models give you a probability distribution over some vocabulary. Given some collection of words, the language model tells you how likely it is that those words appear in nature in conjunction. This is essentially what ChatGPT does. How does this relate to artificial intelligence? Well, when Claude Shannon was developing the language model in 1951, two more mathematicians developed the artificial neuron. And they showed that when you string many of these artificial neurons together, you get a neural network capable of teaching itself to model sequences of words. Neural networks let you make giant language models. And as it turns out, when you make big language models, they become intelligent too. But unfortunately, it took AI researchers a long time to discover this. They thought it'd be more convenient to tell the computer how to speak rather than have it learn to speak for itself. This approach was called symbolic AI. Rather than the AI learning what a dog is via examples, they tell the AI a dog is an animal. But to understand what an animal is, they then have to tell the AI that it's life. And then, having told the AI that a dog is an animal and an animal is life, they have to explain what life means. Existence. It's a never-ending loop. It turns out describing the world to an AI, word by word by word, is not tractable. And when people figured this out, artificial intelligence research halted. This caused the AI winter of the 1980s. But people are tenacious, and they thought maybe neural networks could learn language. And when computers finally became fast enough to run neural networks, they found they could. This was a popular approach in the 2000s. AI research restarted. And finally, in the last five years, language models have become so good, they've become intelligent. And now we have models like ChatGPT. We're rapidly expanding their abilities. In the last two to three years, we've developed the fusion models, which are neural networks that work in a slightly different way. Unlike language models, which are good at generating sequences of discrete symbols, like words, the fusion models can produce a complex object all at once. This is great for our images, but less so words. And moreover, we found that we can get language models and diffusion models to work well together. These are called multimodal models, which you might've heard about. Multimodal models are language models and diffusion models combined. This lets you tell DALI with words what kind of image you want. And while multimodal models are very exciting, they're only just developing now. They'll prove in the coming years.